The Christian Standard Bible has been gaining a tremendous amount of popularity lately. And so at first I didn't really like it. I had spent some time in the New Testament. It was just kind of like, uh. But over the last couple of months, I've been really starting to gain an appreciation for this translation. Let's talk about it. So the Christian Standard Bible, or the, the CSB for short, um, is Holman's latest addition to the English Bible translation market. So I'm not focused so much on the type of print volume. Like I think here I have a genuine leather bound Bible, not, not a super fancy one or anything like that. But I, I didn't want to focus so much on the binding and such, but I wanted to focus on the translation specifically. So what are you getting when you get a Christian standard Bible? Now, I know in, in the uh, first part, I, I had mentioned that I read through the New Testament and I, I wasn't really all that impressed. My, my initial reaction to the Christian Standard Bible was actually one of, well, it's, it's kind of okay, but I mean, I'm probably not going to use it. But I've actually been using it a little more often as a supplement um, to my more word-for-word -word translation. So I use a, a New King James Version, and I got a video about uh, the New King James Version so before we get into discussing the specifics, why don't you take a second, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit like, and hit the bell notification so that when there's new content available, you will be notified. So as with any Bible translation, there's going to be strengths and there's going to be weaknesses. Now, I had mentioned that I had my, my initial thought on it wasn't so great. And, and I think what was happening there is just kind of looking back into my own uh, viewpoint on this is I think I'm just so used to one other translation uh, or, or maybe a couple others. Right? I typically stick around the New King James, the King James, and maybe the, the ESV. I, I like my word for word translations. And I think because the CSB isn't necessarily a strong word for word translation, it kind of threw me off a little bit. So that brings me into my first point about the CSB. It's not a formal equivalence translation, and it's not a dynamic equivalent either. So the purpose of the Christian Standard Bible was to kind of strike a balance. I mean, I guess all Bible translations try to do that, is to strike a balance between the necessity of accuracy and being word for word versus the readability, which ends up more on the dynamic side. So in, in my own reading, I have found that the CSB actually is quite balanced as far as readability and accuracy go. I want to say that specifically to me, one of the strengths of the CSB is the way that it handles narrative discourse. So when you're talking about uh, the book of Acts or the Gospels or maybe some of the historical books in the Old Testament like Kings and, and Chronicles. I, I mean, this does a phenomenal job and it just, it's much easier, I find, to follow along and to read along with it and understand what's going on because you're not mixed up with any sort of odd grammar or any odd wording that's trying to be brought over more literally. It just flows really nicely. Now, I had just recently read through the book of Job uh, in, in the CSB. I was just curious to see how poetry goes. I've, I've read a few of the Psalms before. And to be honest, the Psalms just don't do it for me in, in the Christian Standard Bible. It's a, they're, they're very poetic by nature. And I find that the King James Version, I mean, come on, come on, we're talking about the Psalms here. The King James Version, just like out of the water. Uh, and the New King James Version, for me, does it really well as well. But but poetry in the Christian Standard Bible, it's not its strong point. I, I, for me, I would sooner read the poetry sections in, in a more word-for-word, word, or at least in the New King James slash King James, because they nail the poetry. So I want to give you an example of what one of the Psalms sounds like from the New King James Version, and what one of the Psalms sound like from the Christian Standard Bible, just so you can get what I'm saying here. So I, I understand there's a little bit of subjectivity here, but just, just listen in and, and you'll see what I mean. So this is Psalm 82 from the New King James Version, just a couple verses. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? 
Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. So that's that's the first four verses in Psalm 82. So if we go to the Christian Standard Bible, this is how it reads. God stands in the divine assembly. He pronounces judgment among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Provide justice for the needy and the fatherless. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and needy. Save them from the power of the wicked. So it's a little bit different, right? And and again, I would just prefer, I, I like the way that it sounds better in the New King James Version. As far as accuracy is concerned, the CSB isn't going to lead you astray. Um, so any any thought that, you know, reading the CSB is going to give us some, some doctrine that just isn't right, it, it's just not going to be the case. Okay, now, I find that the CSB works really well for me as a supplement to my regular Bible reading. So for the most part, I, I do my study and my reading in the New King James Version. That's like my, my main text. That's my main go-to. And then off the side of the shelf, I will pull my other translations down to do some comparative study. And I will often, uh, just about every time now, um, I've been preparing stuff. I've been referencing the Christian Standard Bible. Again, it's a great translation. Uh, I do recommend it. Now, the other good thing about the Christian Standard Bible is I have recommended this translation for those who speak English as a second or third language even. And I have uh, one one friend in, in particular who purchased a Bible based upon my recommendation of the Christian Standard Bible, and he absolutely loves it. He, he reads it, he gets it, he understands it. That's kind of a testament to the translation philosophy of the Christian Standard Bible. So one of the things worth mentioning for the Christian Standard Bible is that when it comes to using words that are gendered, such as brother or man or things of that nature, the CSB will tend to translate that as though it's referencing both sexes. If there's a reference in the Greek text which is specific to brother, um, so for example, in the New King James, Matthew 5, verse 47, it reads this, And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. So the idea is that when they see the word Adelphi in the Greek text, which just means brothers, the Greek mind is not just talking about men, it's talking about everybody. But based on Greek culture, they just use the one the one word. They use the masculine uh, plural word, brothers. And so the New King James Version is interesting here. It, it uses the word brethren when this occurs. It's not just talking specifically to men, um, but it's talking both to men and women, right? It's, in, it's inclusive. It includes uh, everyone. So whereas a more word-for-word -word translation would keep that as brothers, the Christian Standard Bible takes that a step further and translates that as brothers and sisters. Here's the same verse in the Christian Standard Bible. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same. Some people have taken this to mean that, well, they're becoming a gender-neutral Bible and, and uh, we should throw them off and, and not use it because they're succumbing to the culture. And my response to that is language by nature changes. And in English, we typically don't use those masculine words as much to refer to a broader crowd. However, where I stand on the matter is this, is that the Bible is translated from a time and a context that is not where we are today. So in, in my opinion, I don't particularly like that the Christian Standard Bible does this. I think we need to retain the culture that it was penned in um, so that we can continue um, with our studies looking to the context as part of our, uh, our exegesis. Not a deal breaker for me, but it's, it's certainly something uh, to be aware of when you're reading the Christian Standard Bible. So to finish up here, I think the Christian Standard Bible is actually a great translation to use. It's not going to lead you astray. It is fairly orthodox in its teachings. You're not going to get any crazy, wacky ideas from it. No need to be scared of it. 
it strikes a good balance between what is word for word and, and what is paraphrased or dynamic. When it comes to teaching and preaching, I personally wouldn't use it for that, um, but I'm not suggesting no, don't use it for that. But part of my convictions on teaching and preaching is that we should be using a more word for word translation because when we're teaching and preaching, we're more concerned with accuracy and getting our point across. And of course, when we're doing those things, we have the perfect platform to explain the words that we're teaching or or preaching on. For me, the Christian Standard Bible is a great supplement. I use it frequently when it comes to preparing things, though I don't actually take it into the pulpit with me. So just a quick review of the Christian Standard Bible and how I've found I've been using it over the last couple months. If you're using the Christian Standard Bible, why don't you go ahead and put it in the in the comments below and tell me what it is that you really like about this translation and maybe tell me what it is that you think is a shortfall of the translation. Anyway, it's a great Bible and it's not going to lead you astray and I actually like it. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in and we will see you next time. <music>